It was a day that I will always remember. It was spring. I just remember thinking I wish that this could last forever. I think the greatest memory I have is um, about three days after the baby came home. And it was just me and her. And I held her and she was mine. There was nothing that was quite as wonderful for me as just hanging out with my friends. It was really terrific. And I really miss those guys. What's your happiest memory? Oh, I, I just try not to think about things like that because nothing can last forever anyway, can it? You know, no one made me feel bigger or more loved than my grandpa. It's too bad some things can't last forever. My happiest memory is when we were just, just so close. Whereas now it's just, you know, this distance and so many things in the way. And but then it was so clear. It was so uncluttered and uncomplicated. And it was close. Gosh, I long for that. Oh. So, where do you think our happiest memories come from? Well, there's no doubt about that. I mean, it's in the family. It's either the, the family you grew up in, the family you're raising now, e even if you're single. It's the family you hope to have someday. And it's interesting, you know, that, that all the evils in the world seem to be aimed at f destroying the family, the one greatest source of happiness in the world. But that, uh, that all happens so subtly. What do you mean? Well, nobody starts out thinking, what can I do to ruin my family today? It's, uh, I don't know, it, it just kind of sneaks up on you. Like in my case, for example, I... I got my priorities pretty mixed up. How'd that happen? Well, it started out just trying to provide nicely for my family. But little by little, I started wanting to make more and more money until I became consumed with this idea. And, and obviously, to make more and more money, you've got to spend more time at work. And the more time you spend at work, the more recognition you get, the more successful you feel. And, it's like, and in fact, I'd come home late sometimes, and my wife would give me that look like, where have you been, look? And I'd usually respond by saying something like, well, hey, what's the matter with you? The only reason I'm doing all this is for you. Which wasn't really true. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't just for them. It was mostly for me. All the recognition, success. And that is exactly what makes it so subtle. Are you giving the least those who matter most Or are you sharing your best With those who really aren't that close Well, it's time to turn around And find out where your greatest joys are found It seems to me that any father wants to provide for his family Well, of course, but there's... There's just so much more to providing for your family than just earning the money. They need love and patience and time together. But believe me, when you're cutting that work syndrome, and you finally come home, the last thing you want to give is love and patience. And what starts to happen is your family begins to look at you as this grumpy old guy who works all the time. And all you can think about is, why don't they appreciate me like the people I work with? And your wife gets a little disappointed because you don't have enough time to help with the family. That usually leads to, she doesn't understand me. And that usually leads to, not like the women at the office understand me. And pretty soon the women at the office start looking better and better. And your family looks worse and worse. And before you know it, boom. You've lost everything. Do you listen with love when someone's soul is aching? Or do you simply choose which judgment you'll be making? Well, it's time to turn around And find out where your greatest joys are found So how do you prevent this from happening? Well, in my case, I just needed to learn how important my own family was to me. Um, I, I needed a whole new perspective, a, a spiritual perspective. And, and that involved learning more about the purpose of life 
the plan, for lack of a better word, and what role my family played in that plan. You see, our Father in Heaven knows where real happiness can be found for us right now. And it's not in the boardroom, it's not in the bonus check, and I, I know for a fact that those things bring temporary happiness and satisfaction, but it's something more than that. It's, it's seeing your family reach their greatest potential. It's seeing everybody work together and help each other. You know, if, if God's priorities are His family, which is all of us, and His happiness comes from loving His family, then that should tell me where my happiness should come from and where my priority should be. If you don't know where to turn, it was just that simple. Listen to your heart and you will learn. Yes, listen to your heart and you will learn. We came that close to splitting up. Did you and your husband have separate goals? Uh, <laughs> no, kind of like m no goals. <laughs> well, it, it was rough. I mean, we had no idea what we wanted. We just knew that we wanted more of something. We just didn't know what it was. And no matter where we looked, together or separately, we just couldn't find it. And you know, when you're empty, you have two choices. You can either turn to the world for answers, or you can turn to God. Hmm. The world's answer was divorce. And then I move on and try to find myself or somehow someone something <laughs> to help me fulfill my needs and feel alive again you know pretending everything was okay but I didn't get married to get divorced but the Lord's answer was different fortunately John and I came to realize that God had a plan for married couples that he's provided a way for people like us to have truly meaningful relationships that could last not only for today, but forever. Well, why would you want a relationship to last forever if you didn't have anything going for you in this life? Well, that's just the point. We had a lot going for us when we first got married. That's why we got married. Somehow, we just lost it. We weren't happy. We weren't looking out for each other. We weren't being there for each other. We weren't even really good friends like we used to be. And you're right. Why bother trying to save a relationship if it wasn't going to last? But if the Lord could help us relearn how to love each other and also promise us that that love, the happiness from that love, could last forever, then we had something worth working for. We had a goal. Do you really believe that there are things that can and should last forever? I didn't used to, but I do now. Why? Because that's really what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. How's your marriage now? It's better. It's really better. How come? Because we're working at it. Well, your friends know what's right And your friends know what's wrong And your friends all know sometimes it's hard to choose But the friend who helps you see Where your choices will lead Is the kind of friend you never want to lose It's that friend who leads with love Doesn't push doesn't shove, just remind you of the truth you've always known. Then does more than just talk, takes your hand and starts to walk by your side along the road that leads back home. And this friend seems to see all the great things you'll be, even when some things you do would prove him wrong. The
happy on he's simply cheering on and the love that you feel from a friend that is real is more powerful than anything on earth for it lifts and it grows and it strengthens and flows it's what allows a soul to feel just what they were so many lives are changed by no My life was pretty messed up. Because I, I had a lot of problems. See, there wasn't a whole lot of love in my home. And there definitely wasn't any of what I would call acceptance. And more than anything in the world, I just wanted to be accepted. Of course, to be accepted in the world, all you have to do is do what they're doing. I mean, to be accepted by the kids who do drugs, all you gotta do is do drugs. You'd be a drinker, it's real easy to be accepted by the drinkers. People lose their values. <laughs> they lower their morals, and it's amazing how much acceptance they think they found. Do you know what they end up with? Nothing. They start out just wanting to be accepted. They end up not even accepting themselves. They feel worse than ever. It was lonely. I didn't feel like I had anyone I could turn to. Hey, can we give you a hand with something? Well, my car broke down back there. Oh, really? What's the problem? That's the problem with the carburetor. I mean, I can fix it. I just don't have the right tools. Well, you're in luck. We got a shop in town. Come on, get up, get on. Yeah, jump in the back. We'll bring you in. Oh, I don't want to. Come on, get on. Let's go. Yeah, go on. All right, uh, thanks. You bet. Easy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, look, why don't we have dinner first, then we'll fix this later. Uh. No, thanks. Don't you think you like mom's cooking, Rich? Chance of a lifetime, Jack. Come on. Okay. Jack, you make yourself at home now. Thanks, it's so nice to have you here. Thanks a lot. I don't want to be a burden. No problem. Nothing fancy, but you're welcome. No, Diana, would you please say the blessing? Our dear Heavenly Father, please bless that this food will, will do good to our body and that our new friend Jack will get to where he's going safely. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Very nice. Well, let's eat. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. 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 Looks like you know what you're doing, young fella. <laughs> you know, we've been uh, pretty busy around here. If, uh, if you're interested, uh, why don't you help us out? Uh, can I give it some thought? You bet your life. 
Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, watch yourself. It's interesting to me that what saved my life was my brother. My father sent him to help me. The father I'm referring to is my heavenly father. And through some loving and caring people, I learned about this wonderful plan. And because of this plan, Jesus Christ makes it possible for me to change and to become all that I can become. It's like he believed that I was someone more important than I believed I was. And just knowing how much he cared, just knowing how much he cared was the first step to my changing. And because he loves me more than I could ever really understand, he's going to help me change. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. When I found out that I was a child of God and that my Heavenly Father sent my older brother Jesus Christ to pave the way for me to return to Him. It gave me hope and courage. Courage to overcome my problems and the hope that I could change my life. Well, I, I don't know all the answers. But uh, I know where to look for him. You know, uh, no matter who you are or how perfectly your life seems to be going, life has a way of sort of uh, making you wake up and take a real long look at, at uh, the hard realities of, of what we're doing here and what this life is all about. <laughs> We've been married almost, well, a little over seven years. <laughs> And, well, things were going good. You know, they were going really good. And we had two beautiful little girls, and we loved being together as a family. And then, uh, and then one day, uh, kind of out of the clear blue sky, uh, Jenny, who was our six-year-old daughter, she was learning to ride a bicycle, and she was hit by a car and died. I, uh, I guess it really took a, a crisis, like, like your daughter dying, to make me sit back and and really ask some pretty strong questions. Well, I was angry. I was angry at God for what had happened and for letting it happen and not not explaining why. Melissa. <clears throat> Melissa, who's our other daughter, she was asking me one day, she said, uh, she said, Daddy, what, what happened to Jenny? Where'd she go? And I think that was really the first time in my life that I, I realized I didn't know. We had nothing. We had nothing to tell her, and, and, and no matter what we said, it just didn't seem, well, we didn't know it was right. I kept remembering our wedding, and the words of the ceremony kept coming back to me. <sighs> that we would honor and cherish and love each other till death do us part. And I kept feeling that uh, with the death of our daughter, that my family was being taken from me, and there was nothing I could do about it. That uh, there was nothing that could be done once death had separated us. Every story has an ending, even when it can't be told. And every broken heart starts mending when it finds shelter from the cold. Awkward dance. 
And then, uh, and then one day uh, I was at work, and there was a friend of mine at work who, uh, who was a very close friend. He, he kind of lived with me through this crisis. He, he saw what, uh, what I was going through. He knew what my wife and I were suffering. And uh, he mentioned to me something. He, he told me one day when we were talking, he said that he knew that there was a way that uh, my family and I and my wife, we could all be together after we died. So I uh, was a little intrigued when he mentioned that he had a couple of friends that we should talk to that... Uh... Well, his friends were a couple of missionaries, um, young men from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And they told us that God had provided a way for us to see our daughter again. And, and they said that um, Jesus Christ was the one that made it possible for us to be together forever as a family and that Jesus could only do this most wonderful of all things if uh, we did our part. We had to improve our lives. We had to change. We had to change certain things about our lives that... Well, in accordance with what Christ taught. Well, and the step that I remember the most, the one that really, at the time, stuck with me. And that was, uh, he said that, that we could be married by someone with the authority to marry us, not just till death do us part, but forever. And... The thing that intrigued me the most is they said that, well, we could tell you this all we want, but you have to find out for yourself. Yeah. And uh, one evening, uh, I was in the den. I was doing a little bit of work, and I was sort of going in and out of thought about, about what these men had told us about. And uh, for the first time in my life, I got down on my knees, and uh, I prayed to our Father in heaven. And I asked him if these things that I had been hearing were true or if it was just something that was kind of pacifying me for the time. And what happened was something that uh, is a little difficult to describe, but it's a feeling of, of, um, of warmth. It's a feeling of love. It's a, it's a good feeling that, that just went over my entire body from my head to my foot. I, I, I felt a strength that I had never felt before. And... Uh, I have received an answer at that time that what I was studying and what I was learning wasn't just a neat idea, but it was true. You know, I never really had to think about this until this happened. I never really had to think about what would happen when we died because I, nothing was temporary to me. And all of a sudden, my life became very temporary. And my life was my, my children and David and and I really wanted to believe what they said was true and something inside of me said, yes, you should continue to listen to this. I know that sounds funny. <laughs> but, uh, so I, after I worked through a lot of what I, what it was I was going through, the feelings and everything, I decided that I would have to get on my knees and find out for myself. And if God really does answer prayers, then he I wanted him to answer my prayer, and I wanted to find out for myself. And so I did. And I just felt really calm for the first time. And all of a sudden, all of the bitterness and the anger came into understanding, and I realized that it was true, and that Jesus Christ had made a way for us to be together again, and that this is one, not a temporary thing. And I know that I'll see Jenny again and that our relationship will grow and grow forever.
it's hard to say goodbye and let go and it's hard to see it end when the memories we have made will never happen again but it's harder for time to ever erase the together times we shared so when we're apart remember all the love we've shared together and for all this love thank the lord above who showed us the way that we can be together forever someday we can be together forever someday we can be together forever someday He lives to comfort me when faint. He lives to hear my soul's complaint. He lives and grants me daily bread. He lives so we can conquer death. eternal home he has prepared he lives we can be together forever someday we can be together forever someday Jesus Christ was the one that made it possible for us to be together forever as a family and Jesus could only do this most wonderful of all things if we did our part. When I found out that my Heavenly Father sent Jesus Christ to pave the way for me to return to Him, it gave me hope. If you feel that now is the time for you to learn more about our Heavenly Father's plan and the happiness it can bring you and your family today and forever, please talk to a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We can be together.